Hi, I'm Ryan Finch, one of the co-founders of First Class Real Estate, a billion dollar company. We have done over a billion dollars in sales in just a few years. I know that's a shameless plug, but I wanted to tell you that because why are you gonna listen to me if you don't know anything about us and you're just finding out who we are? So anyway, I wanted to plug that, but more importantly today is I wanna give you something free, something of value, and today we are gonna talk about culture culture in the office, but not just culture of parties and different things like that, but culture as it pertains to your employees. People get it mixed up all the time and you can get it right. So how can you get it right? The way you're going to get it right with having the right culture is to set up the things from the beginning. And so this is important, ready? A lot of people want servant leadership. The old boss cracking the whip, telling you you gotta do what you gotta do, that's old. It doesn't work anymore, all right? Nobody is gonna be inspired and motivated by you dictating what's gotta be there because they'll lose their job if they don't. It doesn't work. They've gotta be inspired and motivated. So there's a couple different ways to do this. I talked to a guy the other day, great guy, million dollar a year business, and, and he's, he's doing great. But he says, man, I'm just having a hard time with my employees. They just gotta be driven all the time and told what to do and, and so on and so forth. And he said, and I'm just running around doing all these different things and all this and it's exhausting me. And he said, you know, we've talked about servant leadership. How do I serve them? How do I help them? How do I do what they need to do? And I feel like I've done it, but I've created a monster, almost like a spoiled kid that essentially got everything they ever wanted and now they want more and more and more and they're taking it. And if that's you, I've got some ideas and tips that you can implement that'll solve that problem. You've got to do a service leadership where you're serving their needs and making sure they're taken care of where they are not just employees that need to take care of all of your needs that's a culture that has to be set up from the beginning the second thing is you have to be thinking of what they need and being out in front of it but what I mean by that is lifestyle their lifestyle has to be set up. So if that's bringing in a massage therapist, if that is sending them out to get their nails done, if that is setting up a culture of an event that is more fun and you're spending time together, that's all good, that's all great. But sometimes they want that happy work environment, but they need a mix of one other thing. The other thing you have to do is bring them in as equals to you. And this becomes really, really difficult if you're high-minded and think that employees work for you, they're dumb, and they don't understand what's going on on. That's not the case. If you figured it out, they can figure it out and they can be led to understanding what's going on. But you've got to bring them in and share all the information. And what we like to do is share a piece of the pie. What you're going to do is turn around and make profit share a portion that's divvied out at the end of each month or quarter or year, however you want to do it, so that those people can be invested in the success of the business. They'll turn off the lights. They'll make sure that paper isn't wasted. They'll find different ways to save you money because they're driven by the profit. They also want the sales to go through. They don't want to lose customers. You can have every different lane of your business humming when they're all involved they're all focused on the same thing you are, which is growing a business and profit. This is gonna allow you to leave town or go different places. It's gonna allow you to trust them to do different things while you're not there because they now want the same thing you do. Most people won't do it. If they wanna pay them as small as possible and keep as much as they can, that's the old way. You need to pay them, especially good ones, but you only want good ones. People that, when you say, hey, I need you to do this, they go do it. Not the people you have to remind over and over and over again. You're looking for people that you can partner with. So now when you're hiring employees with this picture and this vision of what you want and what you're gonna offer, you're going to hire them based on the results you're gonna get from them. Now, setting up that percentage of profit is gonna be a huge motivator in what they're gonna do. And we've seen our business skyrocket and almost a culture of they hold each other accountable. Nobody then wants a weak link. If somebody's not carrying their weight and somebody else has to do it, then they're upset. If they feel like someone's not doing a good enough job and we feel like we have to hire someone else, they don't wanna hire someone else. They wanna figure out how to be more efficient with our time and the employees and resources that we have. Some of the things we like to do are not having clock in and clock out. We allow them to work from home or work from the office. So these kind of things give flexibility in a work environment that you don't wanna get fired from this job. Nobody wants to lose an employment at a place that pays on profit, that thinks of the things that they need, that has servant leadership, and that turns around and gives them flexibility and freedom just like you as the owner. 
but it's not all fun and games. You have to set up a system and a process that allows you to track their performance. You want to be able to make a scoreboard, set a goal to where they can reach their performance and know whether they're winning or losing. Everyone wants to know what the score is. They want to know whether they're doing a good job or a bad job. There's a book out there, One Minute Manager. It's a huge value of how you can add people in and be able to develop them to a place where you don't have to follow up with everything that they're doing, which is going to be huge in the scaling and growing of your business. An important factor is you need to check those metrics and then meet with them regularly and allow them to self-correct the things that they're doing wrong. They will do this, it becomes a game, they're gonna figure out how to get the results you want faster and better. And that means you've hired the right people and you've made the right culture where they're now thinking on their own. This is gonna free up your brain, free up your time, and explode your business. And don't be afraid to have some fun with it. Don't be so tight-fisted that you're holding on to everything for you to win, because if you just get all the way to the finish line of how much money you're looking to make, but you've taken advantage of people and didn't take care of them along the way, you're gonna end up feeling like you missed something. So don't miss it, it's all a journey. Look for ways to have fun and be creative. There's nobody that's gonna work harder for your business when you're out of town, when you're not watching than the people that know that you care and that you invest in them heavily. Thank you.